So let's go ahead and get started again. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope today uh, you find something that is able to help you with your trading. Maybe pick up a new trading setup or even decide that maybe this is a full system that, that you'd be interested in trading. This is what we're going to be talking about today is basically what we do every day in our trade room. And we do nothing else. All of our trades are very simple trades. We spend here at the Intentional Trader, we spent many, many years making something very complex and complicated into something that's simple to use. That's why we call it a simple trade. Because we've taken a lot of the confusion and the vagaries and the shades of gray out of trading and and do everything we can to make it extremely simple okay so um we have won some awards uh we've been around since uh 2009 been doing the exact same thing since 2009 you know what you, you often hear people say, well, if it's so good, why, why change it? Because a lot of the other people that have systems for sale or, or indicators or, you know, whatever, they, they tend to change them often and, and all the time. They're constantly looking for more and more and more customers, so they've got to keep changing things. Our style has been keep it the same and do it the same way every single day, year after year after year. So this is a required um, disclosure. Basically, it says, take everything I'm saying as just a form of education. Your results may vary. And don't trade with money that you can't afford to lose. Okay? All right, so we're going to talk about mastering a simple trade and this is basically what our trades look like uh, and they're very simple and I can show you and I'm going to show you the keys for each step of qualifying one of our trade setups on this particular slide there is one two, three, four different trade setups. And they can happen that quickly. This is a one-minute chart. Um, of course, then on the flip side of that, we could end up waiting all day for a trade setup. So what we're looking at is that we are going to want to enter on the open of a bar or better, which means if we were putting on a buy order here and we could get a better fill than the open of the bar, which you can see that price backed up here, then we're going to try to get filled here. Okay. So there's the open, the open of the bar or better anywhere up in this area. There's our entry here, okay? So we have time to qualify our trade setup before the entry. But the flip side of having such a strong edge is you've got to be able to execute, which is something you can practice, which is why this is such a good trading system. It's not something where you're Constantly trying to outguess what the market's going to do. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is learn how to execute. So when I say a simple trade, how simple? Well, it's about as simple as a bouncing ball. Okay? Pretty simple, right? If a ball bounce, uh, hits an object and bounces... You can anticipate that bounce if you have the right information. But how simple is that really? 
bouncing ball. <clears throat> well, there's a lot that goes into anticipating what a bouncing ball is going to do. I mean, you have to know what the ball is made of. Is it rubber or neoprene or plastic? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or metal? Or maybe it's even a glass ball. Um, is it solid? Is it filled with gravel, sand, styrofoam, water? What about the the air pressure inside the ball? Or how high it's being dropped from? Okay, so on the surface, a bouncing ball looks very simple. And it can be if you have the right information. You can make assumptions about how that ball is going to bounce. What's it hitting? Is it going to be hitting a, a wood floor or concrete or carpet, gravel, sand? You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into anticipating what's likely to happen. But if you have that information, if you know inside of the ball, inside of the flooring, you know those things, then you can anticipate with a high degree of probability what's likely to happen next. So you, you know all of the characteristics so that when that ball changes directions, you know when it's going to change and how and likely how much it's going to change. Okay. So with price, we're taking measurements like volume, volatility, order flow, um, the strength of a, a of a move, so that we can anticipate exhaustion. We're looking at support and resistance levels that everybody else is looking at. And then we factor in divergence so that we can see when, even though price is moving in one direction, momentum has actually changed to the other direction. Okay? So all we can know is what's likely to happen next. Now you look down here and you see all of these indicators, right? This is a confluence of conditions, just like a bouncing ball, that suggest something is going to happen, that we're going to have a reaction to what's happening down here. And that's what makes it simple. Okay, so now all we have to do is make a process out of it, a qualifying process. And this is, again, this is what makes it so simple. Previously, when I was struggling trader and I was trying to pull it all together and learn how to take a good trade, I would be looking at maybe five or ten different uh, characteristics of the market or conditions in the market and trying to compare all of those conditions and make a decision. Okay, does all of this mean I should take a trade? And I'm sure a lot of you are doing the same thing. With what we do here with our simple trade, we've turned it into a linear decision-making process. Okay, so what that means is we take and we look for a single condition. And until this single condition exists, there's nothing else to do. Okay, and then so we look for this condition. If it doesn't exist, we just keep waiting. And we can wait for, I mean, if you're a day trader, Attempting to be a day trader, you know that the biggest part of your job as a day trader is waiting, right? So we just wait until that condition exists, right? There's nothing else to do. But 
if we notice that the first condition exists, now we start looking for the second condition. Okay? If it doesn't exist, if it never shows up, we just keep waiting. If it does, now we're going to look for the third condition. See, there's no vagaries here. There's no shades of gray. There's no trying to figure out if I did the right thing. If the answer is ever no while you're looking for a condition, you wait. If it's yes, you look for the next condition. And eventually, you're going to get to, okay, it's time to execute a trade. And this can happen, it can take many minutes, or it can happen in the course of a single minute. Okay? Now, I used to, you know, always seem to be confused about entering a trade or never had confidence that when I entered the trade, I did it right. And so a lot of times I would be, I'd be sweating bullets trying to figure out, should I be in this trade? Should I not be in this trade? Should I get in it or should I get out of it? Um, and typically I would be in a hurry or confused or whatever, get into a trade. And now that I'm in the trade, suddenly I'm starting to focus on all the other conditions going on around me. And I'm thinking, uh Oh, did I do something wrong? Should I have done this? And historically for me, the answer was, well, yeah, as you can plainly see, yes. If you look at the, uh, the the math and the algorithms and the explanation on the chalkboard, obviously you're supposed to be in a trade, right? After the explanation that the whoever it was I was listening to gave me, and I'd still be just as confused. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that sounds great, but I don't understand. So you can make trading very complicated. We all tend to do that. Thinking that we're making it easier, we tend to make it extremely complicated. But it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to show you the, uh, some of the indicators that we're going to use to set up this, these conditions where we're making these linear decisions, okay? When I say linear, it means we're going to look for one, and then we're going to look for set uh, uh, condition two, and then condition three, okay? Now, we need to be able to read the information that's coming into the market right now because there is no better information than the information, than the data that's coming into the market right now. Now, that's the best information we can have from making decisions, okay? So here's a typical trading chart that you may see regularly just when you're just sitting and waiting or, or you're scrolling around looking at charts. This looks very typical. There's no indicators, no, no real signals to trade, take trades from. No underlying market information except you have four points of information on each bar, and that's it. That's all you have. Each bar has four pieces of information, high, low, open, close. What happened inside that bar? No clue. Okay, so we want to extract that information. We want to see when something could be happening that could give us an indication that whatever's happening with price right now, it's going to change. And it's going to change right now. Okay? So we read. We're looking for strength so that we can anticipate weakness. So we have our indicator called the Mometer. So what happens on the Mometer is it'll start reading when we start getting increasing momentum. And that's where it turns black here, okay? These bars are black. 
the higher the momentum, the lighter the colors. The lighter the colors, the more imminent the exhaustion. How do we know this? We talked about this on Thursday. If you guys got a chance to watch the video, you'll notice that when price moves hard and fast, comes out of a channel like this, and suddenly it starts moving hard and fast outside of that channel, what happens? People either start getting stopped out, they start getting scared and, and jumping out of the trade, or they start taking profits, right? So what happens when all of that happens? They all have to put on buy orders, right? Which is going to cause price to go the other way. That's why exhaustion is so important. And we know this is going to happen when we have a big move. So we want to anticipate exhaustion. So we have our meter indicator. And that's these, again, black bars turning a lighter color. The lighter the color, the more imminent the change. Okay? Now we have our next indicator. This is our support and resistance lines. So we have... Uh, we use floor trader pivots and mid pivots, which is what most other people like to want, look at. What gives support and resistance lines strength? What gives them value? Anybody know that answer to that? What, what, why do they work so well? Why does price bounce off of support and resistance lines? And why do we even use them? They work for one reason only. Because people believe they work. They are a self-fulfilling prophecy. The only reason there is support or resistance at any particular level is because people believe it exists. And so if they believe it, then it does. Isn't that weird? There's no real, I mean, you can apply all kinds of math and, and all that stuff to it. But the fact of the matter is, it's only people's beliefs that make the support and resistance lines have value. So we look at the ones that everybody else is watching. The ones that, and, and so we want to, see price react from these levels and we're going to confirm that these levels have value now we also have some some other special little uh tools here on the on the end of our lines called our relative strength numbers so we can anticipate that if price approaches in a strong fashion like this, straight up. You see that, again, price is channeling and then it busts out and just it starts moving real hard, real fast. When that happens and price slams into a line with a relatively high number, then we can anticipate a strong reaction to that line. Okay? So that's our support and resistance that we use in our trade setup. Overbought and oversold indicator. Now, most of you guys may use an indicator like the uh, relative strength index, which is a good indicator for determining overbought and oversold. But what you have then is you have a, a, a line at the bottom of your chart and then you have a line above and then a line below and when price exceeds you know the line then you have an overbought condition well you have to look away from trading to do that so we put it right on the bar 
when price becomes overbought or oversold, we put it right on the bar so you can see, and it's a yes or no answer. Remember when you have these wavy lines and then you have something like that, is that overbought or is it not overbought? Yeah, kind of. And then we have all this other information that doesn't even need to be on the chart. So instead of that, we put it right where our eyeballs are looking. Okay, so again, when price gets overbought or oversold, we're looking at exhaustion. Exhaustion. Keep remembering that. Exhaustion. Very important. So if we, and if we can measure strength so we can anticipate exhaustion, that gives us an edge, right? So here's our speed tick indicator. And this is, in fact, one of the very first indicators that I ever developed. And it was the happiest accident, not complete accident, but it, it was an accident because it worked better than I ever thought it would. And this revolutionized the pullback trading for us. This was, this was the biggie. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to know when I thought the big money traders were, were doing their trades. And, and my theory was these guys have all the money and they have all the power to influence the markets in that they're either inside the exchanges, they're supercomputers, or they're right next door or whatever. They're, so they're so close that they can execute very quickly. So I figured if there are orders being processed through the exchange at a very high rate and it happens suddenly, uh, yeah, Abe, we will send a recording out for sure. And if it happens very suddenly, then we can expect that that's a manipulation by the big money guys and that they're manipulating it for a particular reason, right? Um, I know a lot of people believe in stop hunters and things like that. And I don't think they even give a crap about that. They, uh, they know how to manipulate our minds. They know how to make us scared or panic. They just go out and just do the same thing over and over and over again, and we react the same way every single time. So these market makers are causing these big, sudden, unexpected, strong moves. And that's what we're looking for. Because typically... When they're done with that move, price suddenly stops and pulls back. Because, again, people start jumping out. Remember what I said about the big moves? You've got a channel, right? We break out of this channel. Big move, straight up. What happens? Same thing. I'm measuring different things to find the same thing. And that is people start getting stopped out, they start jumping out, or they start cashing out, which causes price to do this, okay? So the logic of what we're doing is really, really simple. We have a pullback alert indicator. Again, reading strength to anticipate exhaustion so what we're doing we've got these little dots here this is another example of how hard we work here at at taking a very complex and complicated uh, set of data and turning it into something usable and easy to use again right where our eyes are looking okay this happens on the current bar during the life of this bar so what we're looking for is is 
price is basically just headed in one direction. And then at some point during the life of this bar, the sellers start getting interested and excited and the buyers are getting weak. So then we have like a churning activity of buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. Okay, When we see that, and we know we've had a hard push this way. Sellers aren't really involved. They're not too interested until we hit this area up here, which is what that tells us. Then we can anticipate the weakness that the sellers are going to be taking over. They're already trying. We have some buyers that are still hanging in there, you know, buying the breakout. But they'll quickly become exhausted, and down, down it goes. Okay? So we see how we're getting the same, we're looking for the same thing by reading all different types of conditions. Okay? When, so when I developed the speed tick indicator, I noticed something else. I, I used a, I actually developed it with a histogram. And... Um, I saw on the histogram what was actually another place where I was not expecting price to be uh, changing directions, but it was. So we, remember I talked about the big money manipulations. Now, they don't always do it at a rate at which maybe we can anticipate the that it's a manipulation. But sometimes... The acceleration of orders. Maybe maybe it doesn't get to 100 miles an hour, which is what we're measuring with the speed tick. But maybe they it accelerated from 0 to 60 so quickly, there's no way that it was us little retail traders, all of us deciding at the same time to place a bunch of orders. Okay? So you kind of think about it when you think about speed. They're, they're both measuring speed, but one is measuring top speed, which was the speed tick. This one is measuring acceleration, how quickly price increased. So it's like a Formula One or IndyCar for the speed tick. And for the ricochet, it's like a drag racer. Okay, Maybe it doesn't get to 100 miles an hour, but it got to zero to 60 really fast. And so, again, we can anticipate the exhaustion. This is a little bit different. We're not anticipating uh, exhaustion as much as what we're, what we're doing is we're actually measuring momentum versus the direction that price is heading. So if you know anything about divergence, I've done a, a number of webinars on it. You can find it on our on our uh, YouTube channel on divergence. Did one not that long ago um, and learn a whole lot more about divergence. But our super D indicator is measuring divergence of price versus momentum. And, and the thing to know about that is that when price and momentum get out of sync, Price will attempt to catch up with momentum. All right? And we have, I, I promise you, uh, 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 I believe, the best divergence algorithm out there. And we've applied that algorithm to seven different momentum oscillators versus price. So when you see like 3D here, three of those seven momentum oscillators are suggesting that we have divergence, okay? You might get all seven. Uh, you might get one. And if you want to know which one it is, these will light up on the current bar. These will, if, if you have three of them, maybe, and the three that are divergent with price will light up and tell you which ones they are. Okay. When we started adding divergence, that took us to the next level on on our trade setups. 
and it really increased our win percentage. This is the biggie right here, right? Everybody knows about the rock star. So the rock star is really just a combination of these three indicators. And when we have a particular set of conditions of these three indicators, it'll generate a rock star. And we don't trade all rock stars. We only trade the ones that qualify. So we have very clear and, and precise set of rules for taking these trade setups. So we use it as a trigger to enter a trade, which I showed you when we first got started. And it prints at the open of this bar. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute. So let's put all of these together and see what it looks like when we have a confluence of conditions. We have a real strong probability that price is going to do something predictable. And this, this, these conditions, we're reading every tick that comes into every bar. And these conditions can, will, will be read on every tick and be reported on the, on the current bar so that we can anticipate all of our decision-making is, is made on the open of the next bar. That's where we start making our decisions on whether we're going to enter this trade or not. Okay, so what we're looking for then, again, to, to help understand this a little bit better, let's say we, we have a, uh, a person who has some information for us and we have to listen to this information and we have to See if we believe this one person and a big decision. Maybe this is a courtroom or something. A big decision swings on whether we believe this one person or not. Will you feel comfortable if you have one person agreeing to, no matter what his profession is, if you have one person that agrees with you or... Will you feel more comfortable that you've made a good decision when you have a lot of people that agree with you? Which is more credible? Which gives you a higher probability that you've made the right decision? Okay? So that's what we're looking for when we use our indicators. We're looking for not just an indicator or a condition to exist, which so many trading systems are built on. I started thinking, you know, how about if they all exist? How much confidence can I now take a trade with and expect it to do something predictable? Okay. Okay. All right, um, uh, a quick note here. Um, we have another event coming up uh, next week on Thursday. I'm going to put it in the chat. I'm going to give you the link here. Uh-oh, that's not it. I think I deleted it. We're going to be doing this event um, for uh, Ninja Trader. Pasting, but it's not going in. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see if I can copy that one. 
I just want to have a, a link that you guys can click on to register for this event. All right. Sorry about that. There it is. So you can go to uh, their website and register for this event. We're going to talk about scalping. So a lot of people uh, kind of think of scalping as a, as a dirty word. You know? uh, a lot of people embrace it. But when I started trading, scalping was something that the crazies did. And I have kind of steered away from that, you know, you thinking of our trading system as scalping because it doesn't really fit into my definition of scalping. But it does fit into many people's definition of scalping. So we're going to talk about that on Thursday. Uh, so kind of register for that and come join us uh, at the Ninja Trader sponsored event. All right, so let's look at how all of this develops. So here's a potential uh, trade setup. And we talked about the Mo meter, right? We have the Mo meter, which is black, and then it starts turning a lighter gray. We have our Obos, which paints the, out, the outside of the bar. So we know we're now oversold. We have our pullback alert. So we know now that price is churning inside this bar, meaning that the sellers were in control and then the buyers started getting excited and interested. We know that we had a sudden acceleration in orders coming in. And we know that those orders were coming in at a rate that is unlikely those retail traders uh, us retail traders could trade that. Now, we were looking for a trigger on the open of this bar. And we didn't get one. So what did we do? Remember the qualifying process? We have step one. We have step two. We have step three. If you're going to use our indicators for a longer term trade, you're going to actually use them the opposite way, Nick. You will enter your long term trade and use our indicators to help you scale out of that longer trade. Our indicators will help you see when either the pullbacks are going to happen so you can take some profits or when price may actually stop and reverse. Okay? So, yes. So, we had no trigger. We had a lot of confluence, but that doesn't mean enter a trade. We have rules. The rule says, even though there's a lot going on here, got to wait. So, we wait. Now we have another bar. This bar oversold, speed tick, and now we're going to wait for the open of the next bar to see if we have a trade. And there it is. There's the open of the bar. This is our rock star. This is our trigger. Because we have a hard drop, okay, so here's the condition one. Remember, there's a qualifying process. So first, first order of business here, we have a channel. Price is just trading in a channel. Second order of business, price drops out of that channel in a hard way. Okay? Hard way, meaning like almost straight down. We have our mo meter going from black to a lighter color to an even lighter color. 
Okay. So we're, we're deep into our qualifying process here. We have the potential for exhaustion because we're oversold. And we have our pullback alert and our ricochet. So we're paying attention. We now, our antenna is up and we're ready to take a trade. But when this bar opened, nothing happened. So we're still watching. And we're looking at the conditions and we're going, okay. Because this next trade uh, this next bar is oversold and we have a speed tick, we have the potential for another trade. Didn't happen on the bar above. So we just pay attention. This bar opens. We get a rock star. We're going to put on our trade right here. Or if the trade backs up a little bit, We'll take it right here. If we can, we call that freight training. We're going to try to take advantage because it doesn't always happen that this bar opens and then it shoots straight up. Typically, there's still some people trying to sell and, and you know, they could drop this bar a little bit and instead of getting filled at the open, We'll take it down here so we get a better fill. Okay. So there's uh, there's that trade set up. So then price starts channeling again, you know, just not really moving real strong in any, you know, particular direction. And we start getting lulled back to sleep, right? And we're just kind of talking about stupid stuff in the trade room, just having a good time. Oh, now something's happening. Here's our channel. Here's our breakout. Notice the size of the bars of the breakout. This bar is a lot bigger than any of these bars. That's another thing you're going to notice on these breakouts. And then we'll have another big bar. Oh, look, it's overbought. That's this pink outline. Okay. We have our speed tick. This tells us, okay, this bar is likely manipulated. We have our... our Mometer, right? Bars are getting lighter. We even have a pullback alert telling us, hey, the buyers were were well in charge and then the sellers started uh, jumping in. And we have our major line of resistance here. So on because of the, the rules that we have, because of this particular condition, we don't even need a rock star on the open of this bar as long as we are five ticks or less from this resistance line, okay, this line. We can still short this without the rock star. That's called a speed tick trade setup. As it turns out on this one, we did get a rock star where we can enter either here at the open of the bar or anywhere in here. All right. And everything I've just shown you is what we do every single day. So we get, we have this confluence. We have an agreement amongst all of these conditions suggesting something specific is about to happen, okay? So price breaks out of the channel. If it doesn't, then we wait. We call it waiting on the bus because our trade setups are 
so straightforward and simple. There's nothing to do. I don't need to be sitting as the moderator of the trade room every day. I don't need to be analyzing the markets. I don't do any commentary uh, as it relates to the markets or anything. I sit, I, you know, I put so much effort into my trading that it's like sitting at a bus stop waiting. That's how much effort is required. All you have to do is look at the charts. That's it. You just sit there and you wait for the conditions to arrive in the order that we need them to be. And it, it happens. I get this question a lot. Maybe anywhere from zero times per day, which is rare, but it can be zero up to 10 or 12 times. And that when I say a day, that's uh, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time each day. So three hours. So we get plenty of trading opportunities each day on average. All right. And so if, the, if we do have the strong move, then we're looking for a breakout of that move. If we don't, we wait. We're looking for a strong potential for exhaustion. If we don't have that, we wait. We're looking for signs that price has been manipulated. If we don't have that, we wait. This is pretty simple, right? When I say a simple trade, this is really simple. If now we're looking to see if, and, and this is, uh, we have two different type of rock star trades setups. One's called the rock star setup and one's called the naked rock star setup. Naked rock star. Remember I showed you that resistance. There are, there is one uh, rock star trade where we don't need that resistance. In fact, we probably get that set up more often than regular rock star trades. So if it doesn't qualify as naked, then we wait. Or it qualifies as naked, or we have a support and resistance there. And then the only thing to do then is execute the trade. Simple. So this is what it looks like. I started showing you guys this on Thursday. This is what it looks like live. So you can see when the indicators print. See, notice, look, no indicators on the current bar, right? Now, I'm dragging this slider, so that's why it's jumpy. Notice, look, the instant the condition exists, telling us that the price is, I mean, the orders are now being processed faster than is likely for retail traders. That's going to tell us that this bar is likely being manipulated by the big boys and they're doing it for a particular reason. Now, notice that the mo meter has kicked in and we're seeing the black bars. Oh, look. Now, all this, again, it's happening on the current bar. We have our ricochet and our pullback alert. Speed tick is behind there. It moves around sometimes. Where on the bar the speed tick is doesn't matter. It could print down here. It could print down here. It could print up here. It doesn't matter. Just that it's on the bar. And then this bar opened, but there was no trigger. Look, no rock star. So we had some confluence suggesting price is going to do something specific. But we didn't have a trade just because we had those confluences. So now we're watching again. No trade. We didn't have confluences on this bar that we needed for a trade. But you don't just trade every single setup. You trade only the ones that qualify for a setup, okay? 
Price is dropping hard. Slams into support. Bar opens less than five ticks from the open of, uh, I mean, from the support line. We have a speed tick, pullback alert, ricochet, major support, and a rock star. And that's where we enter the trade. Hard drop, oversold, ricochet, speed tick. We do have a major support line, but we didn't need it. If I could get on that quick. We didn't need major support, and this is what I call the naked rock star. We have so much confluence here uh, suggesting price is going to pull back that for this particular setup, we didn't need support here. All we needed was this rock star. And we're going to either get in at the open of the bar or preferably down here somewhere. When it backs up a little bit, we do some of that freight training. And that was that ended up being a winner. All right. Same thing. Because we had this pullback alert, this qualifies as a naked rock star trade. Put on a buy order here. Up it goes. And that's all we need it to go. We're in and out of trades quick. Five ticks. In and out. And all you have to do is learn that. Become the best that you can at that. The, here's the cool thing about what we're doing. You can practice it. You can do this. If you have to work during the day and you need to, uh, you know, focus your attentions during the day on your profession or your job or your kids or whatever, you can practice this at night. And instead of sitting with us in the trade room and maybe getting a setup you know, once every 30 minutes or whatever, you can practice in an hour. You could practice a couple dozen trade setups and you practice executing on the static superdome. And we teach you how to do that in our fast forward program. That's part of the pro trader uh, program that we have again. Another. Oh, look. A failed trade. What? I actually put a failed trade in here. This is qualified as a naked rock star. I bought, put a buy order on here and I got stopped out. Oh. How many of you are planning on leaving now because this system actually takes losses? Oh, man, I wanted something that never loses. There's no such thing. That's why I wanted to show you. Yes, we take losses. Now, this next bar was five ticks or less when it opened from this support. I don't need a rock star here. This is called a speed tick trade setup. This was before we even had the rock star. Same setup. And then it ends up being a winner. So this was just a speed tick trade setup. We had so much confluence here plus support that this uh, this was an entry right here. All right. I could show you these all day. You could also see them on our YouTube channel. On uh, We have a trade of the day videos. We have about 200 of them. Once you've watched about 10, you'll feel like you're watching the same thing over and over and over again. Okay? So these are all our pullback trading. We, we, uh, we look for trades, uh, pullback trades from a breakout. We are looking to measure strength to anticipate weakness. We're going to look to identify market manipulations to, re to anticipate the reaction to those manipulations. We're not going to try to jump in with the manipulators. We don't want to trade with them. We want to, and we don't want to trade against them. 
We want to trade against the people that are reacting to them. We're usually in a trade less than a minute. If we're in a trade for two or three minutes, we feel like that's forever. We have, we, our losses are really small, They're li and, and we like to limit our losses. I personally will trade for net three winning trades per day, and then I stop trading live, and I trade sim, or net three losing trades, and I stop trading live, and I trade in sim for the rest of the session. So I never have huge winning days or huge losing days. My mission is consistency. Okay? But we're going to focus on maximizing the trade execution and management. That's where you make your money. What do they say in golf? Um, drive for show, putt for dough. Right? The small stuff is where you make the big money. Yes, we use uh, and we trade futures. You can do this with stocks, but we trade futures and you want to find the most liquid uh, instruments. So the ones we trade are the ones most people trade. So we want to have some good volatility, some good liquidity. So we have six instruments that we trade and we trade the same ones every day. When I manage a trade, if I'm in a trade and the conditions that got me into that trade change to the point where I don't want to be in that trade or I wish I'd, ne you know, I, 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 I wouldn't have gotten into that trade under the current conditions, I always shorten my stop. That's how I work at exiting trades. I never hit the panic button. Um, all I'm going to do is try to either lessen my potential loss or even get it back up to break even. It's just ready, aim, fire type trading. Uh, the linear decision making. Um, previously, my, my trading was fire, aim, ready. <laughs> uh, I never quite knew what I was doing. So, yeah, we trade real fast charts because the information that's coming in right now is the best information you can get from the markets ever. That's the most accurate, best information. So we want really fast charts with really fast decision making. And and this works real well with futures and Forex, and uh, we have a number of stock traders that, that like to trade stocks. I don't trade stocks. Um I think futures make a lot more sense than stocks. Um, particularly, there's no pattern day trading rule with futures. Uh, and the leverage is really good. So I trade futures, and I think uh, this works really, really well with futures. But if you feel like you need to trade stocks, then you can do that. And we're looking at a five-tick target with a seven-tick stop. And I know you guys are like, only five ticks? I don't see it. Um, probably not because that's more investing than trading. Um, and you would have to have, to trade with us, you would have to have a data feed from that IRA uh, brokerage, not likely it's going to, you're going to be able to find one that'll work with NinjaTrader. Best thing to do is take some of that and put it in a trading account at NinjaTrader. You can open a NinjaTrader account for almost nothing now. What? I mean, it's cheap, right? Um, it used to be a couple thousand dollars, but now it's, now that with the micros, what's it, 500 or even less? that have opened an account recently? I don't remember. Yeah. So, is trading five ticks really worth it? I mean, can you make any money at five ticks? Uh, won't commissions and fees eat that up? 
So let's take a look. These totals are after commissions and fees. So let's say we have a couple different instruments here. This one is is ten dollars per tick. Um, this one's one of the five dollar uh, instruments. So let's say you've gotten good at this and you practiced and practiced and you've worked your way up from trading a single contract and you grew your account and now you trade two contracts and then you trade three and then let's say you trade four contracts so you trade four contracts on a single trade of only five ticks so you have potential to actually gain some traction in your trading where no traction may have existed before. So the focus is not on making a lot of money. The focus on what we do is try to gain some traction so that you can see if you can be a winning trader. So I trade and, and many of the traders in our trade room that have been coming for many years, um, uh, uh, trade for net three winning trades per day. And for those of you here that are from the trade room, how often does that happen? Pretty often. I also trade for net three losing trades per day, and then I stop trading live. That happens a couple times a month, two or three, four, could be. I, it, I don't know, um, but not that often, but it happens, and it happens every month, all right? So you can kind of start to see that as you gain traction and you become good at this, this is actually an old chart. This is with the E-minis. You now have the micros that you can start using. So you can start gaining traction using the micros, start getting good at this, start keeping track of your winning days. You start having 10 winning days in a row. You start seeing your account start to grow a little bit. See, that was a huge thing for me. After seven years of struggling, I actually saw my account grow consistently over time, not like a week or two. I mean, we all had that happen. And after like the second week, we're like, hey, I think I got this trading thing. I think I figured it out. I think it's good now. I think I'm good. And then you know how it goes after that, right? So... You can gain some trust. Are you going to get rich at this? Nah, maybe. If you if you start getting you know down into the bigger the the bigger uh, lots, and you trade for you know ten lots, you know a couple thousand dollars a day or more. Yeah, that's not bad. It's it's doable for sure. But don't start there. You've got to start proving to yourself you can be a winning trader. Don't try to make a lot of money. Try to see if you can be a winning trader on a consistent basis. And what is a winning trader? What is a winning trader? Somebody who's ended up with more money than they started with at the trading day, beginning of the trading day. If that's $3, you're a winning trader. Guess what? You finish ahead of 90% of the other traders out there by, by making $3. Now, how many days in a row can you do that? And if you can do that, you've just proven to yourself, I can be a winning trader. Now you have a foundation to build on. All right? We'll skip this one. Now, I said simple. This is a simple um, 
trade, right? That's what we call it, simple trade. I did not say easy. Easy means that now you just show up and take the trade. Nope, there's work involved. This is a job. If you want to do this as a profession, treat it like a profession. There's work to do. We can help you with that. We have our uh, training program, Fast Forward, and, and we offer trade room videos. And um, we have training videos, and we have a mentoring program, and we offer live support. We have our support desk. Um, and I do a lot of mentoring in the trade room every day. Um, we also have our, uh, I mentioned earlier, our trade of the day videos. Uh, there's about 200 of them. I haven't posted one in a few weeks, so I, I should probably uh, probably throw one up there. We have them every day. I just haven't done one lately. All right. And we had our event, uh, Day Trader or Hobbyist, on, on Thursday. And uh, so we're just going to extend that coupon offer for 20% off any of our programs. You can find our programs. You can find our programs at this link. Take a look at them. The, by far, the biggest bang for the buck and the most popular is our Pro Trader program. It includes everything that we have, everything that we will have in the future. So if you're in the Pro Trader program, uh, if we develop something, uh, you get it for free. You get our essential add on suite for free, um, you get priority support. What else do you get? Our data downloader, market replay data, which comes in the essential add-on suite now. Um, all kinds of stuff. You also get lifetime access to the trade room. Well, I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Come see us again uh, at the Ninja Trader event. Go to the ninjatraderecosystem.com website and register for that. And of course, if you've got any questions, uh, you're ready to get started with us, you can contact us at support at theintentionaltrader.com. Yes, I'm going to uh, send this out hopefully this afternoon. We'll get a link to this recording. All right. Everybody have a great rest of your weekend, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.